And thank you for having me here today, Tamara. Appreciate that. My journey today starts at a very northern location, um, 78 degrees north. At 78 degrees north, we have the archipelago of Svalbard. It's quite close to the North Pole, as you can see, just a bit north of that, but not quite there. It is the farthest north you can fly on a commercial airline. So as you land and you look out the window, it looks like the moon. It looks nothing like anything else in this world. And as you get closer, you can slightly differentiate between the sea and the snow, but as you get even closer, you can't tell at all. This is the fjord that is the entrance of Spitsbergen, which is the main town in Svalbard. Longyearbyen Svalbard has a population that is less than the amount of polar bears. There are more snowmobiles than on the island than people. There are more endemic reindeer that are really ugly with short legs and long necks than people. And that's because we shouldn't live there. <laughs> we should not be there. It is a place that is far too north for us and definitely not a place where you should be growing food. So it's kind of ironic that you would have, in Svalbard, the world's backup for our food, the Svalbard Global Seed Vault. This seed vault contains more than 870,000 different varieties of crop diversity, 200,000 varieties of rice, 120,000 varieties of wheat, 4,500 varieties of potatoes, things you've never seen before or never heard of. Because when you go to a grocery store, you see maybe five varieties of each. Why do we need all of that diversity? Well, it's quite simple. We're losing it. The, the Earth had it, and now we're losing it. In China, since 1950, we've lost more than 90% of the rice varieties grown in our farmers' fields. In Mexico, 80% of corn varieties have been lost. In India, 90% of rice varieties have been lost. And the United States, 93% of fruits and vegetable varieties have been lost since the 1900s. And what does that mean when you lose this diversity? It means you lose options for the future. And so what do you do about it? You conserve them, you save them, you put them into gene banks. These gene banks store diversity so that our scientists, farmers, and breeders can use them to improve agriculture on a daily basis for today's food and for tomorrow's food. So let's go back to the early 1900s. Nikolai Vavilov created and founded this idea of centers of origin. He found that on his expeditions, because he was a Indiana Jones type character, he'd go out and look for diversity. He found that certain crops have a center diversity. So you'd find thousands of varieties of potatoes in the Peruvian area. You'd find hundreds of thousands of varieties of wheat in the Fertile Crescent. You'd find rice in Southeast Asia. And he saw that this genetic diversity can be used to adapt to a wide variety of environment, climatic conditions, or pests and diseases. He created this center in Russia, in Leningrad, where he collected over 300,000 different varieties of crop diversity over time. This was the largest collection of crop diversity in the world, and is still one of the largest. But he was sentenced to prison um, for disagreeing with the agreed scientific belief of plant diversity at the time. He did, he did believe in Mendelian uh, genetics, but the Russian scientific belief was not the case at that point. So he disagreed with the current science in Russia and was imprisoned. He died from starvation. It's a little bit ironic that the godfather of crop diversity and of food security died of starvation. Now, his gene bank lived on beyond him. But during the siege of Leningrad, which is now St. Petersburg, the 900-day siege, where over 630,000 people died, mostly of starvation, this collection of crop diversity, which could have been used to feed all the people there, was under attack. 12 of those 630,000 people died protecting that collection, that vault. They did so because they believed that after the siege, after all the destruction and famine, that the only thing that would resurrect them from this was, was what is inside of that collection, and you can see the boxes there. So they died protecting that vault. The genetic manager at the time died with a bag of rice on his desk of starvation. 
It's, it's incredible. And that's what they believe. They believe that that diversity could improve productivity, could defend against pests and diseases, and improve resistance to drought and anything we might face in the future. So continuing on with that, the Crop Trust is working to collect and conserve and use diversity across the world and create a global system of crop collections. This system has three pillars. The international collections. These are the most diverse collections in the world. They can serve over 750,000 varieties. There are 11 of them. They each have their specialty. The rice gene bank in the Philippines, the wheat and maize gene bank in Mexico, a wheat gene bank that was in, in Aleppo, Syria, the potato gene bank in Peru. They're all incredible collections of diversity, and our job is to protect them and use them. You also have national collections, like the Russian gene bank. There's a collection here at ICPA that does dry land work. You have collections in the Philippines, you have collections in the US, in Germany, in Belgium, in Africa, all over the place. Now to combine these collections and make sure that we have access to them, you need data behind them. We need to know what they are, what kind of crop diversity they have, the genetic information behind them so you can understand what traits they have to protect against pests and diseases. So we're sh sharing this data and making it open access. And then you need a global backup, which brings me back to the vault. The seed vault is a global backup of these collections. Because if one of these collections goes extinct, or it, it dies, or it gets destroyed, then that's an extinction level event. Some of these varieties in there are not found anywhere else in the world, because they're no longer in farmer's fields. And we need them, because things happen. A fire in the Philippines National Gene Bank destroyed an entire collection. Gone. It's not here anymore. We have lost diversity forever. That's an extinction level event. In Aleppo, Syria, we all know what's going on there right now, and it has been going on for a while. There was the biggest collection of wheat, barley, and grass pea, and many other crops that feed most of humanity. And to function as a collection, you can't just store them like a museum. You need to use them, share them, do research. It's hard to do research when you have bombs flying. You can't regrow crops, you can't protect them, you can't send a DHL shipment of seeds to a farmer that needs them or a scientist that wants to use them to improve agriculture. So they moved. They actually had to go back to the seed vault where they deposited their seeds and bring their collection back to Morocco and Lebanon where they have other sites to restart their collection. Because a time away from using this diversity for breeding efforts could mean famine down the line. It starts with a seed. That's a pretty simple concept. Everything that we know that grows starts with a seed. To allow ourselves to have the diversity of that seed, the diversity found within each crop, gives us options for the future. Because without options for the future, we will not be able to feed ourselves, we will not be able to feed our children, and we will not be able to feed children after children after children after that. Millions of varieties in the world, and we need to make sure that we can serve them and use them so that we can improve our agriculture and feed our future. Thank you.